In this video, we're going to discuss how to select a fertilizer in terms of its nitrogen ratio of ammonium nitrate or urea. So the pH effect of that fertilizer is going to be a good balance to the alkalinity of your irrigation water and also the crop species that you're growing. My name is Paul Fisher from the University of Florida IFAS Extension. And this research work was done with my colleague Bill Argo at Blackmore Company. The goal of this video is to help you understand how to use a fertilizer pH tool, which you're going to find in backpocketgrower.com. And you'll notice when you use that tool that it's going to ask you for information on a number of factors, the plant species, alkalinity of your irrigation water, the concentration of the different nitrogen forms in your fertilizer. And from that information, it's going to predict the overall acidic neutral or basic effect of that combination of plant species, water alkalinity, and nitrogen concentration. I'd like to recognize all of our industry supporters who have funded this research work. And they include a number of leading growers, as you see on this slide, and also media and fertilizer companies who are funding this research work for the good of the industry as a whole. Now it's worth taking a step back and just reminding ourselves why substrate pH is important. If the pH is too high, then plant health suffers. And this shows a petunia showing iron deficiency symptoms into venal chlorosis or yellowing between the leaf veins at high pH because the iron in the fertilizer is not soluble. Similarly, when substrate pH becomes too low, there are plant health problems as well. And this seed geranium is showing symptoms of iron manganese toxicity at a low pH of 5. So the goal in terms of an overall nutrition program is to balance different factors that are basic, push pH up, and are acidic, pull pH down. So before planting, we typically add limestone to the growing media components, the substrate, to balance out the base from the lime and the acidity of, for example, peat or bark. The irrigation water alkalinity you can think of as dissolved limestone and that will tend to push pH up over time. High alkalinity means that each time you water it's like you're applying lime to the, to the substrate. And we can sometimes inject an acid like sulfuric acid to neutralize some of that water alkalinity. There are also different nitrogen forms. A basic form of nitrogen is nitrate. It will tend to push pH up. Whereas ammonium nitrogen is very acidic. We have plant species such as petunia that are not only susceptible to high pH problems, they tend to push pH up over time. Whereas geranium is iron efficient and will push pH down over time and run into toxicity issues at a low pH. So our overall goal is to help you balance these different factors. We're going to focus on water alkalinity, fertilizer, and crop species. So water alkalinity is not the same as water pH. You can think of it as dissolved lime. You can't measure it with a pH meter. You can, it can have a large effect on substrate pH, and we often talk about alkalinity in terms of carbonates or bicarbonates. Next factor is fertilizer. And here we've got an example fertilizer label for 2010-20. That's 20% total nitrogen in this fertilizer. We're just going to focus in on nitrogen here. And there are three common nitrogen forms that are in a water-soluble fertilizer. That's either ammonium, nitrate, or urea. And you can see that this fertilizer uh, contains ammonium nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen. Now, out of this 20% total nitrogen in the fertilizer, 8% of it is ammonium and 12% is nitrate. So 8 divided by 12, 40% is ammonium, 60% there is nitrate. So more of the nitrogen is in the nitrate form than ammonium. Now, some fertilizer labels indicate whether that fertilizer is likely to have an acidic reaction or a basic one, whether it's going to push pH down or push pH up. 
And you'll notice that this fertilizer is listed as acidic. And typically fertilizers where more than 25% total nitrogen is ammonium will have an acid reaction. Ammonium is a stronger acid than nitrate as a base. So this fertilizer is 40% of all of its nitrogen is ammonium. This is an acidic fertilizer. Now, that number on the bag is helpful, but with several years of research work, we've got a new model, which we call nitrogen calcium carbonate equivalent model for soilless media and hydroponics. This is really designed, fine-tuned for growing plants in containers and greenhouses and nurseries. And that model is used in the fertilizer pH tool in backpocketgrower.com. So let's go through a couple of concepts about that. The nitrogen CCE model estimates the acidity or basicity of each nitrogen form. Ammonium is strongly acidic, nitrate is weakly basic, and urea is usually weakly acidic. Okay, so the strong acid is ammonium, a weak base is nitrate, and urea is somewhere in the middle, usually weakly acidic. Now, why do we focus in on nitrogen? It's because there's more nitrogen taken up than the other fertilizer ions. So for every 1,000 atoms of nitrogen taken up by an average crop, the plant takes up 250 atoms of K, potassium, and less than 125 atoms of other essential macronutrients, such as phosphorus or calcium, and only a very small amount of essential micronutrients. So nitrogen is the big player here. And of those nitrogen forms, as we mentioned before, ammonium is acid. When plants take up a positively charged cation, like ammonium, NH4+, then the roots exude an acid H+, into the substrate, which drops pH. So here's a diagram of this. You can see ammonium getting taken up by the root, and that makes the root more positively charged, and the soil around it more negatively charged. So to balance this, called charge balance, the plant puts out an acid, so there's a plus going in, ammonium, a plus going out, an acid, and pH goes down. This is charge balance, or electroneutrality. There's also another process going on in the soil by microbes called nitrification. And that converts ammonium into nitrate. And in the process, it produces um, an acid and pH goes down. Now, in contrast, nitrate is basic. When plants take up a negatively charged anion, like nitrate, NO3 minus, then the roots put out a base, OH minus, or bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, into the substrate, which raises pH. So here's an example of that. NO3 minus nitrate gets taken up by the root, and the root, for charge balance reasons, puts out a base, and the pH goes up. Sometimes there are there is uptake of nutrients where the pH does not change. For example, it might take up a nitrate and a potassium at the same time, has a, an overall uh, neutral effect on both the root and the soil around it, so pH doesn't change in that case. Urea is somewhat more complicated. Urea goes through a process called hydrolysis. Um, it gets combined with acid and water to form ammonium and carbon dioxide. So initially, hydrolysis uses up acid and pH goes up, but it forms these ammoniums, which is acidic, and pH goes down. So overall, urea tends to have an acidic net effect. Now we've talked about water alkalinity and fertilizer, now let's talk about plant species. The plant species can push pH up or down. Here you can see some research work from Michigan State University. On the horizontal axis, it shows the number of days from planting and on the vertical axis is the substrate pH. There are three species, petunia, impatiens, and geranium growing. It's the same fertilizer as the 201020 that we saw earlier on the fertilizer label. It's been grown at 100 parts per million of nitrogen, and there's some alkalinity, 130 parts per million of alkalinity, in the well water. 
you can see that with the same fertilizer, after 28 days, the petunia had a much higher pH than the geranium. And we see this again and again that plant species have an effect on the pH of the root zone. Petunia is an example that raises pH, geranium drops pH, and impatiens is somewhere in between. So we have iron efficient geranium group plants like marigolds and geraniums, seed and zonal geraniums. They're prone to iron manganese toxicity when pH gets too low, so we usually try to grow them at a high pH. There's an intermediate group. They're not usually the first ones to show high or low pH problems. Angelonia is an example here. You can see growing at three different pH levels, all the plants look fine. We grow them at a moderate pH of 5.6 to 6.4. And then we have this petunia group of iron inefficient plants. They show iron deficiency very easily at a high pH. And so we grow them at a low pH target to try to make sure that the iron is sufficiently soluble. So the nitrogen CCE model takes this information about plant physiology and estimates how acidic or basic each of those three species are. Geraniums are strongly acidic, impatiens are somewhere in the middle, and petunia are somewhat basic. So now what we can do is we can enter the information into the fertilizer pH tool on Back Pocket Grower and see what the net effect of the species alkalinity, nitrogen form are going to be on pH. So here, for example, we have impatience. We've got 130 parts per million of water alkalinity. We've got 100 parts per million of total nitrogen, of which half of that is ammonium and half is nitrate. The fertilizer, if we were growing the plants in pure water with no alkalinity, would have an acid effect in this case. But if we combine the acidity of the fertilizer with the alkalinity, 130 parts per million of alkalinity here, of the irrigation water, they're going to balance out and there'll be a neutral effect. However, we can vary some of these assumptions. For example, if we move from 100 parts per million to 200 parts per million, we had an acidic fertilizer, now it's strongly acidic. And it's so acidic that it is going to push pH down. It's going to be more acidic than the alkalinity of the water. So increasing the fertilizer strength increases the acidic or basic effect of the fertilizer. If we change our species now from impatience to petunia, petunias are more basic. So in this case, with that higher fertilizer concentration and a lot of ammonium, even though it's going to be acidic, it's not going to be as acidic as the impatiens would be, and we overall have a balance between the alkalinity of the water and the crop with that amount of ammonium. If we switch to geraniums, geraniums really push pH down. So if we had a high fertilizer concentration and a lot of ammonium with geranium, it's going to push pH down and it's going to result in iron manganese toxicity issues. Now, if we have a fertilizer, uh, sorry, an irrigation water that has low alkalinity and we still keep going with a very acidic fertilizer, then we're going to have an imbalance. Okay, so if we have a less alkaline water, then we need to change the ratio between ammonium nitrate. Here we've got 50-50 and it's going to have an acidic overall effect. If we drop the amount of nitrogen from ammonium to 10% and the nitrate up to 90%, now we have a neutral reaction with our low alkalinity water. If we load too many basic factors together, the same thing applies to too many acidic factors, we're going to have drift in pH. So here, for example, we have petunia, basic. We've got alkaline water, basic. We have low ammonium and high nitrate, basic. You combine all of those things together, pH is going to drift up. And in this case, we're going to end up with iron deficiency in our petunia crop. There are some different options that you can use to balance the pH effects if you're not going to have an overall nutrient 
um, balance between those three factors. If you have too much base, that means that substrate pH is going to drift up, then we're mostly going to be concerned if we're growing iron inefficient plants such as petunia. We could reduce the amount of alkalinity in our irrigation water by injecting sulfuric acid to bring the alkalinity down. We could increase ammonium nitrogen or urea nitrogen and decrease the amount of nitrate nitrogen. Or we could change the amount of limestone in the substrate. On the right hand side of this table we have a different situation, too much acid. Substrate pH is going to drift down. It's mainly an issue for iron efficient plants such as geranium because we'll run into toxicity issues at low pH. We could turn off any sulfuric acid injection into the water. We could increase in the fertilizer the amount of nitrate nitrogen and decrease ammonium and urea nitrogen. Or we could add some extra limestone, slow acting residual limestone that will react over time into the substrate. So that's really the science behind the fertilizer pH tool. It's a very easy tool to use. You go to backpocketgrower.com, select tools, and select the fertilizer pH tool, selecting a nitrogen ratio for pH management. The same information that we've discussed in this video is the information that you're going to enter into uh, the different fields there, and it's going to tell you the acid or basic or neutral effect of your fertilizer.